Welcome back to the ZOS introduction. This is the seventh video in the series. The objective of this video is for you to have a better understanding of ISPF, the Interactive System Productivity Facility. ISPF is the original TSO-based application with full screen support. ISPF is commonly started when logging onto TSO. ISPF is used every day by ZOS technicians supporting ZOS. While ISPF includes default panels, it is easy for technical staff to customize panels. ISPF is a TSO-based application which includes full screen support. It is the original integrated development environment. In addition to being a set of tools that let you develop and maintain applications, there are a suite of services, APIs, that let you define screen images, display messages, and manage application data. The chart shows the default ISPF primary option menu. The default panel includes licensed materials message box. Enter will remove the box. Many customize this panel to minimally remove the licensed materials message box from appearing. Once the licensed materials message box is removed, the chart shows the default ISPF primary option menu. Observe numbers 1, 2, and 3 in the ISPF panel shown in the chart. Number 1 is an action bar across the top where each entry has a drop-down list of actions. Number 2 is the option menu to select a function. Number 3 is the function key bar to perform a function by pressing the respective function key. The ISPF display cursor can reference any row and column using arrow keys, the tab key, or mouse clicks. Once the cursor is in the desired row and column, then you can begin entering text or pressing the enter key. Some rows and columns are tagged as 3270 unprotected areas, enabling text to be entered. Other rows and columns are tagged as 3270 protected areas, disabling text to be entered. An attempt to enter text in a protected area might lock the keyboard. The reset function exists to unlock the keyboard entry. A program attention function key exists to terminate a running program. An analogy would be the use of control C in a workstation system. ISPF option zero is the settings panel to apply to all panels in ISPF. To highlight a few of the settings, observe the number one on the chart. Remove the slash to place com the command line at the bottom of the panels. The benefit of the command line at the top is making use of the workstation copy and paste functions. Observe the number two. The command delimiter permits stacking of commands to be executed upon the next enter key. Observe the number three. The dropdown permits default ISPF colors to be changed. While the TN3270 emulator can change colors, the same is true for ISPF. As previously mentioned, ISPF is a panel-driven interface. This chart highlights a very commonly used set of panels. Three, Utilities displays a set of utility options. Four, the DS list utility displays another very useful panel, the dataset list utility panel, which includes many useful functions. The chart shows the ISPF primary option menu where the option selected is three, utilities, by typing the option number onto the command line. Note the other installed products at the bottom of the screen. This is a local customization which adds tools needed at the site to the ISPF primary option menu. The result of entering three, utilities, from the primary option menu is the utility selection panel. The Utility Selection panel has many utility options. The chart example shows option 4, DS List Selected. The result of entering 4 from the Utility Selection panel is the Dataset List Utility panel. The Dataset List Utility panel can list dataset names from a dataset name pattern or Unix file name. In the chart, entering dataset name pattern ZIBM050 would locate and display all dataset names beginning with ZIBM050. The chart shows datasets matching ZIBM050. 
Observe number one is an area to enter primary commands, while number two is an area to enter commands in the column to the left of the individual dataset names. Observe number three, a slash in the command column displays a list of available column commands. The slash in the column displays column actions available, such as edit. With a small amount of experience, you would rarely enter a slash. You would enter the action you want to perform. In the chart example, E is in the command column to the left of zibm.jcl. The result of enter is to enter the ISPF edit mode on dataset named as zibm050.jcl. The next video in the series discusses the ISPF editor. Entering 3.4 from the primary option panel would jump directly to the dataset list utility panel. The chart example shows an equal symbol in front of the 3.4. The equal symbol is unnecessary on the primary option menu. The equal symbol eliminates the need to be on the primary option menu to jump to the 3.4 dataset list utility panel. When on any other ISPF panel, the equal is treated as if the option is being entered from the primary option menu. From any ISPF panel, the help command or F1 provides online help about the specific panel. The chart shows online help and tutorial topics when reviewed from the ISPF primary option menu. In addition to the ISPF online help and topics tutorial, an ISPF bookshelf is available from the web-based ZOS internet manuals. The ISPF manuals with the stars to the left are highly recommended. The user's guide volume one will quickly make you proficient with ISPF. The User's Guide Volume 2 follows the same format as Volume 1. However, Volume 2 will explain each topic in more depth as well as show additional functionality. The Reference Summary is an excellent source of information about ISPF syntax to customize panels and create new panels. In summary, ISPF is the original TSO-based application with full screen support. ISPF is used daily by ZOS technicians. Online help and ISPF User's Guide Volume 1 and Volume 2 are available to advance your ISPF knowledge and skill level. The video made several references to dataset names and Unix file names, which are detailed topics covered in subsequent videos. The next video explores the ISPF editor. Thank you for your time.